It's New Brew Thursday! Woo! And we're going to Belgium for today's episode. Very excited. Not literally, metaphorically speaking. Yeah, not not really. For those we're, of you in the literal net, yeah, who will send me emails. You weren't actually in Belgium. There's a fly in here. <laughs> God, this, we're this, in Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> That proves we're in Belgium. There's a fly in this house. <laughs> that was non sequitur. Um, but no, I'm really excited because uh, we got Tilquin Goose on the show today. I've had this beer before. I had it in Seattle. Yeah, I've had it a couple times. I had it. Yeah, okay, good. That's enough. a statement. Yeah. <laughs> I drank this beer in Seattle. I had it at Vern's place during Hard Liver. Yeah, uh, from at Browers. Yeah, well, that, that was like right. This is a this is a too. really great cl palate cleanser when you're doing massive beer tastings. Yeah. You got a lot of barley wine, right? And barley wine, stouts, stouts, whatever, and then it's like, okay, just please give me a goose or something that I can refresh my palate with. Yeah, exactly. Um, but we're doing Tilquin goose. Cool <clears> thing <throat> about Tilquin goose is that um, goose is kind of funny in Belgium because there are the word or the beer. The because the, the weird the word's kind of funny too. It funny is. Ha -ha. It's kind of guiz. Guiz. Yeah. Every, unless, this is, unless, is this Unless it's one of bone. those words that everybody like complains about the pronunciation. Right? There, some people say it's Guza? like Guza yeah, or, or Guza, Guaze Guza, or yeah, something like that. But um, what is yeah, yeah. Fine. But in, well, the, the weird thing about Goose is that you have um, you know if you see Goose on a shelf, um, they may have brewed it, uh, they may have not. Um, it's almost a, a wine kind of thing where um, there are. Gooseries in Belgium who don't actually brew their own goose. They'll actually purchase um, goose from different brewers and then they'll age it and blend it themselves. Now, That's actually. Correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe I am, but I don't think so. Um, goose is basically lamp blended lambic. Yes. Yeah, so it's they're not actually purchasing goose, they're purchasing. Different aged lambics. Yeah, that's that's that that's they exactly blend right. to make the goose. Yeah, right, yeah, because okay. goose the, the blend varies, but normally it's one, two, and three year old lambic that's blended. Right. Um, but Tilquin is cool because you know most of the gooseries that are out there have been around for a really long time. Tilquin is cool because they're pretty much brand new. They've only opened like the last couple of years. Yes, I'm gonna pour. We're gonna cheers. We're gonna Sorry, I'm just like I want to drink this. It's just it's it's really interesting, and I thought our viewers would like to know. I'm sure they would after we start drinking. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. John's all about the head tonight. Hmm. It smells good. It mm. Smells uh. That does smell good. I love gooses. Got some tartness on there, and it's got a nice little bit of brininess there. All right, so just. You know, it's coming through. Random fact question. What Not was your fruit first? itself, but the taste of, or smell of fruit is coming yes. through. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no one was listening to what me was, anyway. <laughs> I'm sure the audience was. They were complaining that I'm, I'm talking over you. Um, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, what was your first goose? My first goose, I believe, was Jardin goose. Okay. Uh, which, nice which remains one of my favorite gooses. So um, hmm. Probably the same one, but I think I had my first at Bill's house. Okay. So it was either that or the 2009 Lambic. Oh, the Bellevue Lambic Selection. There you go, that mm -hmm. one. Which is kind of an awesome first one to have. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was kind of a yeah. grand slam of gooses in yeah, your seriously. mouth. Um, so, so yeah, it was I definitely think, something Bill gave me. I think mine was St. Louis Goose Fond Tradition, um, but it also uh, could have been the, uh, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's really, it's really, really, like Hansons? famous. What's the one with the? I think it's Hanson's. What's what's it called? Hanson's Oud Goose. No, it's not that one. It's, it's got like a orange label with Cuvée. Cuvée Renee? or something. Cuvée. Oh, Cuvée Renee. Cuvée well Renee. Um, yeah, th Cuvée actually... Renee. I had in the basement of this Belgian place in San Francisco up in. Uh, oh yeah. Like, you remember that? Yeah, that was, that was cool. That place yeah. was cool. Yeah, and uh, I think that might have been my first actual goose because before I drank a bunch of lambics, and I was like, oh yeah, I like these gooses, and they're like, those are lambics. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Um, it should be noted that actually, um, I, I honestly don't know how widely available Tilquin is, but if you want to find, you know, a relatively available goose like a like a legit goose uh cuvee renee from lindemann's cuvee is, renee yeah it's is, one of their what's one of lindemann's few beers that i actually enjoy yeah well yeah, their most, frambois series is not enjoyable to me at all uh, well they're yeah it, they're they they're back sweetened with um aspartame Sacrin. and, yeah, and aspartame, uh, something yeah. like that i but, remember that i don't know if it just came out a year ago or it came to my attention a year ago but i remember it kind of broke on twitter that they 
sweeten those. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, oh, that sucks. Yeah, and you it's know? it's 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 just kind of it's kind of a different thing. But the Cuvée Rene is their like traditional. That's a good beer. School. It's That's a great, a great beer. beer. Yeah, it's a great beer. Yeah, absolutely. And this is imported by a company out of Brooklyn, New York. So I think that it's pretty widely. Twelve percent. Twelve percent. Yeah. Twelve percent. Yeah. So I mean, we're if we're getting it out here, I'm sure it's getting to it's maybe re- maybe not as good in the Midwest, but at least on the both coasts, I think yeah. it's going to be. Yeah. Easy yeah. Did you get this yeah. at the local place by us? Um, no, but it is available. So, um, yeah, but it's like, like I said, it's, it's just cool because, you know, like I said, Tilquin, they don't brew their own, but they are a blender. Um, how, do you know like, how old they are? Did we mention that yet? Um, it's a uh, few years, not very old. Right, and that's, and this, so this is, uh, you said these are the ones that blend, right? Because they, they yes. haven't been around long enough to actually brew their own lambics to be old enough to be used in the goozing pro- blending process. The goozing process? The goozing process. <laughs> I'm going gonna, gonna to gooze process. all over you. <laughs> oh, yeah, you went there. Um, I totally did. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, but, but, yeah, so they're, they're a blender. Um, a couple of, it's, it's funny because a couple of other ones you wouldn't expect that are just blenders, like uh, Hanson's is the other one that's, they just blend, they don't brew. Um, anything on site. It's kind of so. a cool gig, you know? Yeah, it really is. It's like you don't have much responsibility but to make an awesome tasting beer. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you don't have to worry about the back end and... You don't have to clean the mash tun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No graining out for these guys. You don't That's the worst monitor, part of commercial brewing. You don't got to monitor how the beer is doing. I mean, do they just pick a blend and then someone else bottles it? No, uh, no actually I believe No, I think they buy they, barrels, right? Yeah, they, they buy um, all of the barrels and then they, I believe they age them themselves as right. well. Oh, so they, so buy, they monitor they the aging process from as from the well. brewers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, now, don't get now. Don't quote me on this because I'm not sure if they buy the actual barrels or if they just buy raw lambic and raw then lambic they have and their barrel own barrels. Themselves. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm. Um, but either way, I mean, they're buying they're buying fresh lambic and they're aging it themselves and they're they're doing their own blending process because yeah. based on like the percentages of old lambic and new lambic is going to greatly change the qualities of your goose. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's more aromatic or more fruity or more whatever. Yeah, so. more briny or more the acidity is a huge part of it. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, this exactly. is pretty So now pretty a goose acidic, so. a goose is considered a sour. I would think so. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you t- you talk about funky versus sour. And yeah, that's lambics true. fall into a more funky realm, I think, in my opinion. Um or a sweet realm, depending on what kind of lambic it is. Yeah, it depends on who you're getting it from. Right. And so but I mean this goes into the full on Acidic, sour range. Yeah, of definitely. Beer, where it's puckering and it's 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 gonna give you yeah. that nice like. Mm. I think, yeah. but they can, they can be both, right? They can be. Yeah, it, it's, acidic it, or acidic. It, 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 it varies depending on on the uh, the the blender and the vintage and like all that other stuff. Like from from my personal experience, at least, I found that like bone goose isn't quite as sour, or you have like Cantillon, who is known for having you know really you spot know, on sour. Yeah, 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 their their stuff is acidic. So. But I don't think I've ever had an acetic goose, though. I mean, because the acetic quality generally comes from like a Flanders style, true, yeah, like brown yeah, or red ale. Yeah, that's that's kind of they're they're more known for that, like acetic, almost vinegary kind of. Thing, right. So, well, on that note, we're gonna send you off to Master Pairings so that you can see delicious food being eaten by delicious people. <laughs> I was that was it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delicious. So, yeah. He was. was also delicious. <laughs> hey. But I'm very high in cholesterol, so you don't <laughs> want to eat me. <laughs> All right, so move along. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another Master Pairings with me, your host, Bill Sysak. And once again, Steven Johnson. Who is not a guest on Master Pairings. Okay, he's not a guest. <laughs> he's, he's, well, what's, what's the right word then? Blight? A co-host? Uh, to, oh, okay. A co-host. co-host? Okay, got it. All right, go. we'll call it co-host. So today we have a great pairing for you. We have a classic comfort food dish. We have creamy tomato basil soup, which, you know, mm-hmm. not always has basil, but tomato soup, creamy right. tomato soup. And a lot of us grew up having what with it? Grilled, a grilled cheese. cheese sandwich. Oh, yeah. So I have a great grilled it's cheese great sandwich. Saturday, rainy day, um, rainy day. The only thing different from your normal grilled cheese, I mean, I've got some great Munster and some Gruyere on there. And I did use a sunflower whole grain bread. You know, okay. Because it's good for you. Fiber. So no no craft Singles? No craft Singles. Um, but if you had to use craft Singles, this beer would still go with it. Okay. So, of course, this is the... 
But it would mock you while you drank it. Exactly. <laughs> the iconic Arrogant Bastard Ale, one of the first, or actually the beer that's considered to have brought along the term American Strong Ale, even though to, by today's standards, it's only 7.2%. So it's just a great big amber ale, really delicious, has a lot of hops on it, uh, a lot of malt background. It's going to go really well. It's delicious. The malts will handle the acidity of the tomato and the different things. Now I know we have spoons here, but are we going to be? Toast. We're just going to be dipping our, our bread in there. I'm right? guessing. Yeah, I'm guessing. Mm. I'll try it individually by itself first. Mm. 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 Great cheese uh, squeaks uh, almost. There's nothing better than a gourmet cheese sandwich. Mm. Brings out these huge caramel notes. Starts to get you more of that realization of what I'm talking about, like a scotch ale. Yeah, totally. Almost brings it up to like the the Bach we did a few weeks ago. Um, that kind of caramel notes to it. Yeah, it has, the, 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 but with the stronger hops. Right, and that's that's what happens when you have um, either higher at fat as it's cutting through the fat and things like that. Right. It will definitely do that. But a great beer. Um, we're rocking some fourth and second anniversary stone glasses out of my cellar today, or out of my, you know, I gotta my do this. glass collection. This has got to happen. All right, I'm going into. I guess we're double dipping. That's all right. Mmm. Oh my god. Great tomato notes. <clears throat> wow. That just. It brings up the roastiness of the beer a little right. bit. Oh yeah, now instead of getting that kind of caramel notes, you're getting more of the caramelization of the, of the grains, but now you're getting this heavy roast. The roastiness, yeah. Yeah, it's just really over the top nutty. Um, mm -hmm. Almost getting more into a brown ale now. Right, like, now really it's like heavy. a hoppier brown ale. Yeah, yeah it's, it's getting big. It's and interesting bold. how the, the beer kind of just right. flexes a little bit right. and kind of fits oh, yeah. into that mold. Craft beer is so... You know, I do have to try it by itself. Flexible is a good word for it, I guess. Uh, but it works really well as far as balancing out everything. And of course, the great thing about craft beer and the great carbonation is that it cleanses the palate from mm -hmm. those fatty things like cheeses. Oh, that's so good. This works, I mean, every bit of this works with this beer. Like individually, each of the items work. Mm -hmm. Together, they just explode. This is, this is phenomenal. And yeah. it's one of my favorite meals. See, now when you just mind. have this by itself, mm -hmm. then I get some nice hot bitterness on the back right. second and third of the palate. Even though it's considered comfort food, doesn't mean that it's not going to have complex flavors on your palate. Right. You know what I mean? It's really going to bring out some great characteristics. You get the graininess of the bread and the dough. Put a little hint of garlic salt on there just to get a little more salinity to it. The great cheeses come into play with their characteristics. This is kind of a chunky, creamy tomato soup, so you get like the whole piece of tomato in there. Right. The basil comes into play, and you start getting that um, oregano type taste too. Mm -hmm. So another reason why something like this, an amber type beer, goes so great with tomato based dishes. Right. And if you think about this, this is a variation on a pizza. Right. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Not? Totally. Yeah. Because you've got the tomato sauce, you've got the dough, you've got the cheese. Yeah. So and you've got things like basil and oregano in there. Yeah. So it's a classic and marguerite pizza almost. Bear in mind that this is kind of a gourmet tomato soup. It's a gourmet grilled cheese sandwich. It's not Campbell's in a can with some craft cheese thrown onto Wonder Bread. I don't recommend rolling like that, but if you do, guess what? This pairing's still gonna rock it. It's still gonna rock it, yes. But I, I, my thing is, when you're doing these kind of things, you're drinking a craft beer because you respect the beer, respect the pairing. Respect food. Yeah, respect the well, food. Well, it's all about respecting food, respecting right. beer. Respect wine, spirits, cigars, your other half, you know, all those things. Respect everything, respect guys. Respect yourself. Yes. Because you're a good yourself. person. Yes. And we love you. Yes. Cheers. But it's a great thing, and I hope you guys try it at home. Cheers, Stephen. So we're back from Master Pairings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well done. We are back. Well done. Yes. Well done. Good, sir. Uh, it was probably awesome, or maybe not, or... Maybe did you see the, the B-roll from last week? I did, show? yeah. That was funny. I flipped off the cameras. Yeah. That was awkward. I thought you were quite regular. Yeah. <laughs> I am pretty you're regular. Frequent. You're frequent? I am frequent. So, just ask my roommate. <laughs>
<laughs> anyway. The things we learned about Stephen Johnson on Uber Thursday. Yeah, probably more than you need to know or want to know. <laughs> TMI. Anyway, so final thoughts on this beer. Uh, it's fantastic. It's good. Yeah, I, like I it. Yeah, I, wish I will never more. drink this again. It's a uh, very refreshing. Beer. It is. Yeah, it is. It's like I said. It's it's not that level of acid where it makes it like you know hard to have more than a few sips. You know, because I mean I've mm -hmm. had especially there are certain vintages of certain lamp uh, gooses that I've had where it's like oh this is delicious whoa. Mm -hmm. The the body on this and the refreshing aspect of it I think make it a perfect summer beer. This is definitely a beer that I'm going to buy a lot of and drink throughout the hot summer here. Yeah, in, it's yeah, it's, it's got Empire. that tart. Acid, or acidic it's almost like a nice glass of lemonade. That Citrusy. Tastes I was about mm -hmm. to say that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's and it's it's perfect, it's not. Yeah, in my it's, opinion, it's not like you know, For super super dry that it like sucks all the moisture out of your mouth. You know, right. like, but it it's has dry enough bit, to where it does suck the moisture out. Right. Of it. Where it's still refreshing. Yeah. yeah. This is, I think, actually a good gateway goose beer as well. I mean, that's yeah. I, gateway is kind of like a overused word, but um, you know, introductory beer beers. introductory beer to you know to gooses because I mean. You know, I know people are like, oh, yeah, my first sour was Duchess de Borgna, and I hate sours. It's like, well, yeah, because your first one was that, Duchess de Borgna. Well, also... I mean, that's an acquired taste it, beyond yeah, belief. Okay, I, just wanted <laughs> so. to, like, I didn't want to dog that beer. No, it's, that it's beer a great beer, definitely but it's... definitely not a first-timer no, beer. No, yeah. You know, it's that's, like... What that's like going from Coors Light to Arrogant Bastard. Yeah, you're not going to enjoy that transition, yeah, most likely. It's, it's kind of odd. So um, you know, it's but it, this is a great kind of introduction. If you've never had a goose, this one, even St. Louis uh, foo, uh, foos, foosball, uh, St. Louis goose fond tradition yeah, is also a really one, good yeah. Yeah. introductory no, beer um, for the goozes. So. Actually, uh, Beerzel goose is another one that that seems to be. Oh, the Oud Beer Beerzel, yeah. Oud Beerzel, yeah. That that one, it, they seem to do really well with not being like too overly acidic mm -hmm. and a little one bit more drinkable. So. With uh, goozes and sours in general, I like to like uh, do side by side tastings like the same like with IPAs mm. because if you have an IPA from a certain place and then three hours later you have another IPA and then uh, you know an hour later another I mean they kind of taste blend the same they, they blend together, together but they're not yeah, and so when sure. you taste IPAs side by side you can definitely taste the difference it's, in it's the amazing how the radical the difference can be yeah. or yeah. the same with these um, I think we did that with what West Coast IPA and um, what was the other one we I don't did remember. with that? I, I know, yeah, but it was about. like we because I think we both made that comment like, "Oh, these kind of taste similar," and then we did a side by side, and they're like, "They are nothing alike at all." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. so it's the same thing with these. Um, you buy one like Goose Fawn Tradition. It's like I'm thinking of that, and it tastes like this. Right. Well, there's but, a general. I think there's a general flavor profile for most styles. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that you yeah. remember, that your brain remembers, so that when you have that style again, it's like, "Oh yeah, this tastes like that." It reminds me of this other one that I drank. But if you do that side by side, there's so many different like, you know, little bits here and there that just completely alter the flavor profile. So um, just real fun. quick, I'm I'm getting like a an almost like pineapple-y kind of thing, right? Yeah, there's definitely like I'm almost really a sweet, enjoying. a sweet, sweet and sour thing kind of going on in my mouth with it. It's yeah. like it comes in a little bit sweet and then it just sort of sours and puckers up. Yeah, enjoy that a lot. Yeah, and but it kind I'm, of stinks up in the back of your mouth, you know, if that <laughs> sounds right. It does. Too easy. Me. So too easy. Um, today is the eighth. Of June. In case you didn't know what the date was when we filmed this. Yes. It's the 8th of June. <laughs> in internet time. Oh, wait, no. This um, isn't the 8th of June. This is the 1st of June. That's well, the actual we'll date. There's that fly. Eight, see it? Eight, yeah, I see June. the fly. Yeah, yeah, the light. light. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> tomorrow, June 9th, um, is the Firestone Walker Brewers Invitational. Um, and actually, I take all that back. Today is June 7th. Tomorrow is June 8th. Saturday is June 9th, which is the Firestone Walker Brewers Invitational. Uh -huh. We need to look at um, calendars this before is, we Yeah, this is, this is what happens when you try to do future time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be there. These fools will not be. I planned be. on going, but I yes. forgot to buy a ticket, and now it's like all these contests are happening so you can get a ticket, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should have got Dude, a ticket. Dude, if you want a ticket, I can give you a ticket. I got one. Oh, I might have to take you up on that. <laughs> All right, so Seriously. maybe well, me anyways, and John will be there. Anyways, I won't um, be there. So. Yeah, Matt will not be there. Um, but uh, I'll have stickers in hand. If you'd like a sticker, find me and have a beer with me, and I will give you a sticker. That's just my pathetic way of saying. Do we have t-shirts? Maybe friend. you can bring. Uh, yeah. I thought about that, but the problem with that is it's like I have well, to bring one from money. each size, or yeah, it's like, and Making I don't really, I don't really want to sell anything at the Firestone Walker Brewers Invitational. That's, that's kind of weird. weird. Yeah. It's not really the place for that. I don't think I have a seller's permit. <laughs> no, but he'll, he'll, he'll give away stuff for <laughs> free, no problem. You're not selling, you're slanging. Right. You're yeah, slanging. I'm slanging. Why you gotta slang the crap? Because I had to. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but you know what? Um, here's the here's what I will do. I will bring one shirt from each of the major sizes, meaning like small, large, small, medium, extra. large. Well, not small, small and medium. Like I don't think any of the Matt people will be there. There's a lot the of Matt, Matt people. Matt All right, people? fine. Actually, you know what? I think Matt Bernelson's almost Matt size. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> Matt is Matt All right, size. so what I'm going to do is I'll bring one from each of the sizes we carry. Small, medium, large, extra large, double, triple, and 4XL. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And, I didn't um, want to bring a lot of shirts, but I'm going to bring a lot of shirts. <laughs> no, no, no. But we're not going to sell them. If you, if you find us and you tell us your size and we happen to still have one, you win a free shirt. So oh, rad. Yeah, we'll give one away from each size at the Firestone Walker Brewers Invitational. Sounds so be good. there for that. And um, I think maybe we should do the same thing for the Kalani's anniversary. Ah, uh, yes. Good call. Uh, that will be the following Saturday, which is the 16th. Um, find us at Killarney's uh, in Riverside. We'll be there celebrating five years of amazing craft beer so did, serving. So did they just walk up and say a size? No, they walk up and they're like, hey, I love Newbury Thursday and I love you and I want you to have my children. No, don't say that. Um, but, That's you know, you just something like that. Just come up and introduce yourself weird. and have a beer with us and, you know, tell us what size shirt you want and if we still have one, it's yours. We're if, buying friendship at this point. No, we're not buying friendship. We're saying, <laughs> hey, if you're going to be there and you I'm come joking. up and say hi, then... I, I, I would pay for friendship. I'm still not going to be your friend. I still kind of do. So anyway, uh, but yeah, so uh, we'll do it at both the events. It's not going to be a thing that you should get used to. Um, <laughs> if you really, 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 really want a shirt, you probably should just buy one. It's going to be a lot easier. <laughs> so, but it's fun to give them away here. Yeah, yeah, but you can get one at the uh, newbrewthursday.com slash store, um, where you can also buy stickers and patches. Shameless plugs. And um, But yeah, so we'll be there. Firestone Walker on the 9th and Killarney's on the 16th. Come up and say hi. Have a beer with us. It'll be awesome. There's yeah. going to be a... Uh, a special packing house beer at Clarney's too that um, we just sampled uh, a little while ago. Because we know the brewer. It's tasting pretty good. So yeah. It's yeah. a dry hopped Belgian. Right? Yes, the Belgian rye IPA. Yes. It's called the Bell Ringer. The Bell Ringer, yes. <laughs> Oh. Which is appropriate for Riverside. <laughs> oh, by the way, I looked up what the uh, rain cross was yeah, all about. Yeah, there's a link on the show notes for it, just for Matt. Oh, okay. Well, in case you didn't read the show notes, basically the rain cross like is the two... <laughs> I made the show. Shut up. <laughs> it's got the two crosses. That's the actual rain cross. Mm -hmm. And then the bell is for all the missions, because right. Riverside is part of the whole mission yeah, line. Yeah, and then the mission end, too. Yeah. There you go. Right so on. It's a mixture of the two. Awesome. Mash up. It's sort of like, you know, when the pagans constituted the cross. It's the pagans? Pagans. The pagans. The pagans in Christianity. Imagine, they, like, <laughs> pagans with Pope hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Anyway, Anyways. before we divulge into madness, we yeah. will say see you next week. And until then, stay safe and drink beer. Cheers. Cheers.